Hi everyone, welcome back to Melanoma 101 presented by Aim at Melanoma. I'm Melissa Wilson and the goal of Melanoma 101 is really to walk you through the topics of melanoma from early detection and prevention through diagnosis and treatment in tiny bite-sized pieces to make it a little bit easier, easier to understand and digest. If you enjoy these videos, please make sure that you like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future topics that we present. So today we're going to be talking about mole mapping. So this goes a little bit further along our discussions about early detection and prevention. Um, there have been a lot of different questions that have come across the expert line about mole mapping. Um, and really, you know, there are different techniques that are used. There are private companies. There are mole mappings that are done through uh, clinical offices. So there is a little bit of wide variability of what a definition of mole mapping can sometimes be perceived as. Um, but at the end of the day, mole mapping is really total skin photography. So this is where a, um, you know, person will take photos of really as much of the surface area of your skin as they possibly can. Um, they will take photos in a private lit area um, where they can, a lot of times it almost looks like a photography studio because they have the big lights, so they get good lighting. Um, they'll have, you know, a really fancy, nice camera, um, obviously a private space um, in many instances for mole mapping because since they are taking photos of all of your skin, a lot of those photos are of places that are, you know, not sun exposed and are private. So um, you will get in positions that will allow the photographer to really capture places that may be a little bit difficult to see. Like I've seen, um, you know, folks that, you know, bend over like that to get the tops of the shoulders. They'll take pictures of the your hands and the bottoms of your feet. Um, they'll have you put your leg in weird positions on chairs. Um, so, the, you know, this is an experience that um, for some people can be a little bit anxiety producing, um, but it is done by somebody who that's their job. So, um, you know, these photos are stored on protected servers where they are, you know, people don't have access to this um, outside of your clinical team that's taking care of you. Um, they're, you know, protected databases. Um, in some instances, you can ask um, the place where you had your total body photography or mole mapping done to give you a copy of this on a flash drive or a disk. Um, that'll be password protected um, for you to take home. Um, you'll have to sign a consent form in most cases so that they know that it's going to you. Um, where you can use those uh, mole mapping photos that they take um, in an adjunct for your self-exam, which is kind of nice at home um, if you have access to this type of service. So again, mole mapping is total skin photography, um, that they can use as a reference, that your provider can use as a reference tool to really look at your skin on their routine examinations. Because let's face it, you know, a lot of times these skin exams are about a year apart and even the best providers can't remember what moles look like from one year to the next. Now, you know, in some particular instances, like when we talk about who these are best for, you know, folks that have a lot of moles. Um, in general, I would say people that have more than 20 moles, mole mapping is a great tool because it helps not only you, but also your clinician keep track of what all of these moles look like over time. Um, this is also really helpful for folks that have what are called dysplastic nevus syndrome or dis a history of atypical or dysplastic nevi. And the reason for that is really these folks make moles over the course of their lifetime. Um, and so mole mapping can be a really great tool to look for new melanoma or like new pigmented lesions or um, new skin changes. Um, and so the we always tell people that the mole mapping is sort of like a, a reference tool that I can look back and I can see on, you know, July 7th, 2023, what Melissa Wilson's skin looked like as compared to what it looks like two or three years from now or even two or three months from now. Um, sometimes the mole mapping does need to be repeated in the instance of people that have dysplastic nevi because since you continue to make moles over time, sometimes if we notice that there are big changes in the amount of moles that someone has, um, we'll ask them to repeat the mole mapping um, because we need an updated reference tool. It's sort of like when books get updated with new information, um, it's the same same concept. 
Um, but for a lot of people, the mole mapping can really just be done once if you don't have any of those conditions. Um, it's also really good for people that have moles in places that are a little bit harder to see. So, you know, not everyone has a person that they feel comfortable checking their back or their feet or their genitals at home. Um, and so this is a really great way um, for you to get documentation of what uh, parts of your body look like that you can't really see very well. Or if you have, you know, moles really only on your buttocks, you know, that might make it a little bit more difficult for you to see those areas. So the mole mapping can be really helpful for those instances. Really mole mapping is great for everyone. Now I will tell you that in some instances, mole mapping is not covered by insurance in some places you know, in some instances it is. That's something that you really have to talk to your insurance company about. Um, mole mapping is maybe one to two hundred dollars. Um, I have seen it be a little bit more expensive, a little bit less expensive, um, but for the most part, um, mole mapping is a couple hundred dollars if it's not covered by insurance. So it's something that you definitely want to um, check before you sign up. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is that um, mole mapping is a great tool, but is it absolutely 100% necessary? No. Um, there are other ways to photo document the skin um, with just your own cell phone camera. Um, and, you know, a lot of times if you're taking photography at home, um, I'll tell people, you know, if there's a mole in particular that you're worried about to put a roller um, on it or some type of reference, like some household item that you can see, you know, very clearly that something's getting larger or not. Um, that's extremely helpful when you do have mole mapping. Um, they do have a measurement tool that is part of the exam that, you know, either it's a sticker that's on the skin that then they can use as calibration later, or sometimes they'll actually put a physical measurement next to some moles. Um, I've also seen part of mole mapping where they'll take like, you know, obviously like a, like a blanket far away photo of like, say the whole anterior trunk. Um, but then if there are particular moles that are that stand out, they'll actually take a closer um, macroscopic or closer view of that mole um, a lot of times with a measurement tool adjacent to it to really follow um, the atypical nevi. So, um, you know, sometimes the photos will not all be from a distance. Um, sometimes they will be close up photos as well. Um, it's painless because it's photography, it's non-invasive. So this really is, you know, an easy way to keep track of your moles for early detection and prevention. Um, if you have questions or need access to finding mole mapping, um, the best place to start really is to ask the person that's doing your skin exams if they offer mole mapping and if this is right for you. Um, if you don't feel comfortable doing that and want to reach out to the Ask an Expert line, it can also help you find some of the more commercial um, places or places through larger institutions that do offer mole mapping. Um, a lot of times um, they schedule out really far. So you want to make sure that you talk to your provider about this if you think that it's right for you. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the Ask an Expert line. Um, as always, I'm Melissa Wilson, and this is Melanoma 101. Have a wonderful day.